محمد وآل وأصحابه أجمعين واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected brothers First of all, I would like to make a dua, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give a best paradise to our sister. Say, Ameen. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive her sins. Amen. Whatever good she has done in her lifetime, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept it from her. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bereaved family, O Allah, give them patience, sabr, and also ajr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever the burial of a Muslim brother or sister was done. He used to come close to his grave. And he used to say, Astaghfiru li akhikum. Ask maghfirah for your brother or sister from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa salulahu at tasbih. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him or her a stability. Fa innahu al-ana yus'al. Because now after our departure, Two angels from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to the dead and they will be asking her two questions, or three questions. Number one, Who is your Lord? Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord. But Allah will empower the practical Muslim to answer properly that Rabbi allazi la ilaha illahu khalaqa samawati wal ard. My Lord is that Allah who is the creator of the entire world. And there is no partner with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was my belief. So the second question will be, وَمَا دِينُكَ What was your deen? So if the person concerned was a practical Muslim, for sure he or she will say that Al-Islam, because she was practicing or he was practicing, so Allah will empower him. And the third question, وَمَا تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُلِ الَّذِي بُعِسَ فِيكُمْ what was your belief regarding that man who was sent to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he or she will say, Ashadu annahu Muhammad, Abdullah wa rasooluh. I testify that this is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned before janaza, that death is such a decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that al-mawt qadhun kullu nafsin sharibuha that is such a cup that every living person has to taste it wal-qabru babun kullu nasin dakhiluha and this qabr and grave is such a gate that everybody has to enter to their gate kullu man alayha faan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everybody is going to die and to leave this world and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he asked the sahaba all of us, to be very honest, every one of us, we think that I am the utmost clever person. I am the utmost smart guy. I am special. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked the sahaba, that, do you know who is the clever person and the smart guy? So they said, Allah wa rasulu alam. Allah knows and the messenger of Allah knows better. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the actual zirak person is that one mandana nafsa who put himself to accountability tell me the truth that we are putting ourselves to accountability or day and night we are putting others to accountability nobody has ever said that i have done wrong oh these people are like this oh this one is like well, guy you are crazy are you are Majdun, are you are Pagal? Why you are not thinking of your own self, you are chasing others? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the Qayyis and the Zirak person is that one, Mandana Nafsa, who is putting himself to accountability. I was telling the brothers in the, my bayan that Ramazan and fasting in Ramazan, yes, we do it because that is the order of Allah. As far as the case of Ibadah and Halal and Haram is concerned, there is no if, why, when, and but. That is the order of Allah. Halal is halal and haram is haram. That is the order of Allah. Farz is farz and wajib is wajib. There is no if and but why it is so. Who are you putting Allah to accountability? A famous saying is 
they do not put a question mark where Allah has put a period. When Allah said it, that is executive order. So we are fasting because Allah said it. But still, wisdom is there. And the wisdom of fasting is self-control. Because your fridge and freezer that is full of every ni'mah, food is there, drinks are there. You are not going, even though if you are thirsty, you are not drinking it. If you are hungry, you are not eating it. Because Ramadan, it gives you the wisdom, self-control. And Islam means control yourself. We are trying to control the world. We cannot control ourselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that who is the Palawan and the strong guy? So Sahaba Rizwanullah Ali Majma'een, they said that the one who is throwing to ground his opponent. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, no, the actual Palawan and strong man is the one who can control himself. That is our problem that we cannot control ourselves. So Ramadan, that is self-control. Number two, that is self-assessment. Number three, that is self-accountability. Number four, that is self-judgment. If from today we will start that, that I will adopt these four ways, self-control, self-assessment, self-judgment, self-accountability, you will put yourself on the right track and you will go straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this will bring you to the right track and to the free way which goes to Allah which is called salat al-mustaqeem. In every prayer, we are making that dua. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. So, what is Sirat al Mustaqim? Sirat al Mustaqim is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered, what Sahaba has conveyed to the entire ummah. That this is the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has shown us. So, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, what the Qiyoman? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, think of that day when you will be taken back to Allah. Our problem is that we buried our sister now. We said she is gone. Still we will be living for another 100 years. وَإِذَا حَمَلْتَ إِلَى الْقُبُورِ جَنَازَةً فَعَلَمْ بِأَنَّكَ بَعْدَهَا مَحْمُولُ When you are taking the stretcher of a dead body to the maqbara, so the, the poet says, فَعَلَمْ بِأَنَّكَ بَعْدَهَا مَحْمُولُ Don't say, oh, the poor lady, she passed away. So it means that you are not going to pass away. You will be passing away as well. Dictate yourself that tomorrow, day after tomorrow, one year later, ten year later, I will be in the same shape. Some people will come if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees so. So they will take my stretcher to the grave. What I will do there? Only to think about this place that I am going there. And when the angels will come and approach me and they will ask me the question, is there any helper and support on your side? Say, no one. Your own, your own practice. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in a hadith, I don't want to prolong my talk. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith, when somebody is going to die, at that time he has three friends. One is his wealth, which he has earned in whole life long. They are the cases, they are the plaza, the building, the properties, the bank balance, the car, the gold, the silver, just name it. That is one friend. And another one, his relatives. That is the second friend. And a third one, his amal and action, indeed what he has done. Prophet wasallam says that the moment here, the ruh came out of his nostril. So the first friend, for which he has made himself crazy, diwana and majnoon, mean the wealth and the plaza that is gone. Because the hairs are there, they are looking forward, which one I will take and which one you will take. Which house I will take and which house will go to this brother and that brother and that sister and that sister. So Rasulullah says, right after that, that friend disconnected itself. How unloyal friend that is. And the second one, that is the relative. Have you ever seen anybody that is staying at night with the dead one after burial? Mm -hmm. Say, no. So Rasulullah says, their friendship is only until burial. Now we will make dua and everyone we will go back. So that friendship is gone. And the third friend, Rasulullah says, what a lion friend, good or bad, but he is lying. If that is dirty, he will give you a company. If that is beautiful, it will give you a company. Rasulullah says, after burial, when the people depart, so, if the person concerned, he was a pious Muslim and pious woman, a very handsome or beautiful or pretty personality approached him. When he enters our, the, the cover, so the dead one is asking or telling her or him, Ahlan bika wa sahlan man anta. Who are you? Most and most welcome. As we say in Pursu, so he or she says, How beautiful you are, how handsome you are, how 
put fragrance to how? Who are you? So he will say, Ana I'm your action. I'm your deeds. I'm your good practices. Allah has given me this shape. I will give you company here. And if the case is other way around, so a very ugly and dirty face will show up. A very dirty body, huge. This figure type of body, it will show up, a bad smell will spread it right away. So he will say, La marhaban bika, may Allah not bring you here. I am dirty, I am filthy, I have bad smell, you increased it, who are you? He will say, Ana'u alaka sayyid, I was your zina, I was your cheating, I was your fraud, I was your stealing, I was your corruption, I was your this and that and that, I will give you. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said on the day of judgment, when Israfil will blow in the trumpet. So the first one, it will turn to a very beautiful mount, a beautiful horse, and will be standing outside the, the grave. When the person concerned will come out, so he will say, Irkabni, ta'ala mara gibtuka. Fear and that won't be life. I was riding you, but now I will give you a ride to take you to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the case is other way around, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, right away it will hold and grip his or her neck and put him down and jump over. Dead. That are kabuka. And that one, you were riding me because you were following your whims and your desires. Now I will mount you. And you will take me to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Fa amma man So the one who transgressed the boundaries. The only thing is, just find out that where the boundaries are. So when you find the boundaries, tilka hududullah fala ta'taduha. Look at me. If in Afghanistan, or in Pakistan, or in Bangladesh, or wherever you are. If there, you will transgress the boundary of your land and jump and trespass into the land of your neighbor, or your brother, or your cousin. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Qayyisu, the Zirak one is that one, Mandana nafsa, who put himself to accountability, wa ba'd al maut instead of working hard for the life of this world, he is thinking of his life in the hereafter. For how long a person will live here in this world? 60 years, 70 years, 100 years, let's say 1000 years. What's the end? The death. death. And the coming world, the akhirat, for how long that will be? Forever. 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 So, for, 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 for that long you are living here, think of that much. And for that long you will be living there, so think of that much. But our crazy concept is like this, that that one we have totally dropped. We have trashed it. We are thinking of this, that you will be living here. So, فَأَمَّا مَنْ تُغَى وَآصَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا So, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, يَسُوْ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَ وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْعَاجِرِ And the foolish guy, I'll let me make it a little bit blunter. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the foolish guy are the stupid guy. Yes. He is following his whims and desires day and night. Allah is Rahim and Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ya ayyuhal insan, bhaagarraka bi rabbi fil kareem. Why you are deceiving yourself with this quality of mind that I am Kareem? If I am Kareem, I am Qahar as well. I am becoming angry as well when you are trans transgressing the boundaries. So, as Nasim Jan and uh, Mansur Jan told me about our sister, that she was a very nice lady. She, when Muslims testify that a person was nice, so Allah says to his angel, that look it in the column of nice people. Because now we are here, so we prayed her janazah. All of us, we say that based on that testimony, we say that she was a nice lady. Say it. She is a nice lady. She, is, she was a nice lady. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angel that all these Muslims they testify that she was nice. So write her down there in that column where you are putting the names of the pious people. So what the Yawman turja'una fi ilallah. Think of that day when you will be taken back to Allah. Summa tuwafa kullu nafsim ma kasabat. Everybody would be recompensed for what he has done, good or bad. In khairan for khair, wa in sharran for sharr, the last thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting there in masjid. A bit one came, bit one mean the Bazgar. In Afghanistan, what we call? Bazgar. The Bazgar and the farmer, simple people from desert or from farm or from mountain. He came and, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, sini the khair. Tell me some khair. Prophet was busy with other Sahaba. So he said to one Sahabi, take him there and recite to him some portion of Quran. So he took him there to a corner and he started Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When the earth will be spinned to its utmost, because that zalzala will be will not be measured on wretched scale. 
that is of beyond scale is a zulzilat al ardu zilzalaha and allah says wa akhrajat al ardu asqalaha now when the earthquake happened so some dafina and some mines are coming out right or not yes. so allah says wa akhrajat al ardu asqalaha the earth will bring out all its dafina and khazana wa qala al insan ma laha the human will become amazed what happened to the earth it brought out all its dafina and khazayan يوم يزن تحدث أخبارها this earth will speak out بأن ربك أو حالها the order of my lord I cannot violate it that was you who were violating day and night the rules of Allah look at me I cannot violate any rule of Allah بأن ربك أو حالها Allah سبحانه وتعالى says يوم يزن يستر الناس on that day the people will depart to Allah سبحانه وتعالى to his court ليروا أعمالهم so they may be shown their deeds and their أعمال what you have done in that world for me يعمل مسقال زرة خير يرى so whosoever is doing good to the extent of a small atom he will see it there وما يعمل مسقال زرة شر يرى and whosoever do to the extent of an atom bad he will see it there so now when he cited the last two ayah وما يعمل مسقال زرة خير يرى وما يعمل مسقال زرة شر يرى that simple man and buzzer he said أو يحاسب الله على الزرة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put us to accountability for that small thing. He said, Hakaza Yaqulullah. That's what Allah says. No, no, no. Sit. I will recite you more, 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 more. So, some hard words are listening, but loud what happened. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam noticed it. He said, Maza hadas, what happened? So, the sahabi, he related the story that he says, when I recited for my amal miskara zaratin to the extent of atom, we would be put to accountability. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what do you want him to do? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you ordered me. I want to recite more. He said, Dahu, fine no kat pakho. Let him go because he understood what deen means. So whatever you are doing, good and bad, you will see it there and the recompense is there. Say one time, Alhamdulillah, and three times, Qulhu Allah wa Had. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم ربنا فرها ورحمها ولا تعذبها وجل الجنة مسواها ومسوانا مسوا جبين المؤمنين اللهم ربنا إجل القبر ورتم الرياض الجنة اللهم ربنا إجل القبر ورتم الرياض الجنة والله سبحانه وتعالى فارجيه هرسين والله سبحانه وتعالى يكسب هرسانات and good deed والله سبحانه وتعالى يقدر هو attended here and assisted والله سبحانه وتعالى give them a reward and wealth والله سبحانه وتعالى the bereaved family give them suffer and ajal give them suffer and ajal 